so here at 15 Wing Moose Jaw, we are more than just the snowbirds, what people normally associate with us. Here we have two Canadian Forces Flying Training School, which is where every single last Royal Canadian Air Force pilot does their phase two flight training. When a pilot gets here for phase two, normally they'll already have their own flight suits. However, if they don't, they can go to the clothing stores here and get any sort of the gear that they need, like their flight suits, um, flight jacket, flight gloves, boots, or flame retardant underwear, all of which are very vital to their, uh, to their pilot training. From there, a really important part of being a pilot is being medically fit. So something else that they could do if they hadn't already had one is a flight crew medical where basically they're being tested to make sure that they're fit to fly the aircraft, um, especially ejection seat aircraft. We have to pick up on, on even minor medical issues or what seem like minor medical issues outside of the aviation uh, world. Uh, so issues where the ears aren't able to equalize. The concern being uh, if one ear is able to equalize while the other ear is unable to, you end up with different pressures in, in the inner ear on either side. So that discrepancy, that difference between the pressures in one side versus the other can lead someone to experience something called alternobaric vertigo, which is a sensation of vertigo simply due to a difference in pressure. Um, it can be a, a quite an incapacitating um, sensation for someone, and so we have to make sure that uh, they're able to clear their ears well before we ever clear them to fly. From there, obviously they go into ground school where they're learning all sorts of different things like instrument flight training, how to read the, the weather, and ground school can last around um, six to ten weeks depending on um, how everything goes. But the biggest thing that comes from that is the fact that they're learning procedures, they're learning safety um, of the aircraft, how to, um, how to work that aircraft in a way that when they're in the air, they never have to worry about um, if that light comes on, what does it mean? Um, from there, they're going to go into the simulators where they, they really are starting their real flight training. This is where they're going to simulate flying the aircraft. They're going to be given emergencies. They're going to learn how to take off and land um, in the simulator. So when they actually get to the point when they're flying the aircraft, they've already seen a lot of what they've already done in the simulator. Well, it was my first sim in that uh, airplane, or the first time I've been in that airplane in eight years, or that, you know, sim in eight years, and, and uh, at that point I was just trying to find the right switches, and I knew, I knew what I needed to do, but I didn't know how to do it yet, because I didn't have the muscle memory of, of where I wanted my hand to go at the right times. Um, so you just have to really sit back and focus on the fundamentals of safety, and then as you can, peek and try to find the, the switch that you want or that, that you need at the time. It, it takes a little bit of muscle memory, but it comes quick in a smaller cockpit. So. I think you rely, for me, I just kind of rely a lot on past experience, knowing that I'm not going to fly it perfect, but I'm going to fly it safe for now, and uh, building to the point where I'll be able to hopefully fly it um, much more adequately. And then, and then flying it adequately is one step, and then on top of that is being able to instruct and fly it adequately. And so you just build towards that point. Uh, so it's, it's frustrating coming from a platform where I could do that. Uh, that was a lot more difficult. And then now you come to something that's less difficult, but I still am not there where I want to be yet. So, but that's why the, we have the training program uh, set up here. Um, another really important part, obviously, is what we call ALSI and egress, which basically is preparing the pilots for ejection seat aircraft. Because what we fly here is the Harvard II, which is an ejection seat aircraft. And this ejection seat, ejection seat could one day go on to save your life. And with that, it's very important the pilots know how to operate them properly and are very, very comfortable with the procedures that lead up to that. <laughs> oh, no, that's a fun part. I have fish. You will be meeting fish today. As uh, the most important point about the ejection is the position before you eject. An ejection is something very violent. You'll be pulling 15 to 20 G. So if you're not in the proper position, you're going to get hurt. Or the chance of getting hurt are extremely high. The second most important thing is the position before you land. Because again, if you're not ready to land, you're going to get hurt. The third is 
to be confident that the system works. You just ejected, what are you gonna do? The pilot, I was drawn to it just like the average person would be drawn to it from the unknown, the excitement, uh, the dream of what it would be like kind of thing. So I really didn't know what I was getting into when I, uh, when I signed up. Uh, everything to me was uh, like shock and awe kind of thing. And looking back on it, it seems very childish that things that seemed so second nature and routine and just ordinary work uh, at the time to me seemed like Hollywood movie star stuff. So uh, I was just always impressed by everything I saw in the beginning. Uh, for me, it's always been a lifelong dream, uh, just from first time seeing airplanes all the way to going to the airport with my grandfather, looking at the airplanes flying off the ramp. I always knew that's what I wanted to do. First flight for me was actually on the CF-18. Uh, it was a famil famil flight for me, so uh, I remember a lot of uh, a lot of nausea and uh, yeah, it was pretty physically demanding actually. But uh, it didn't curve the desire to go flying. That's for sure. That's why I'm still here. <laughs> Lieutenant Carol Smith is a graduate of the United States Air Force Air Command and Staff College. He has deployed twice as part of operating the military. When it comes to graduation day, it's an exciting day. They're there with, the, they bring their families here, they get to show their families what they did here, they walk them through the simulators and their flights, um, and from there they go on to actually do a formation flight with everyone in their, um, that they're graduating with. Uh, right off the airplane, uh, which I uh, probably is how you remember stuff uh, from back in the day, sir. Uh, unfortunately, my uh, I haven't really completely absorbed the idea of it, but it, it's pretty pretty surreal mm -hmm. to be working towards something for so long. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the emotions definitely lag behind the experience. But as you're going along, I'd say the biggest hurdle is the mental component. Yeah. So getting up in the morning, working your hardest, knowing your stuff, and demonstrating that. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, it seems like the biggest hurdle is not really being comfortable with it, not having a good preparation beforehand, and then being in a situation where you can't react or you don't know how to react and you freeze. Mm -hmm. And those are the most challenging days when you get into a situation where you're not prepared. But those are also rewarding because they give you a reminder that, hey, you know, you should be working harder. Mm -hmm. You really got to give it your all. It's going to work out, but it seems like a marathon once you get into those points. Mm -hmm. So I think my end goal is just to continuously enjoy my job, go to work every day with a smile on my face and, and really love what I do.